For me, pressing flowers always takes me back to my childhood memories of collecting wildflowers and flowers from my mother's garden and pressing them to craft with. To this day, I still find old books of mine with pressed flowers that look as though I just recently pressed them. Today, there are more ways I use to press flowers than the book method. So let's dive right into how my daughter and I press flowers for our arts and craft projects. First, start by selecting fresh flowers with vibrant colors. Ensure they're not damp or too mature. Of course, these don't have to be just from your garden. They can be from bouquets of flowers too. The only thing is the flowers need to be fresh. So if you're drying flowers from a bouquet, try to press them within the first couple days of owning or receiving the bouquet. Once you have your desired selection, remove the stems and any excess foliage. Since I mentioned it, we are going to start with the book method. When I was a child, I didn't line the inside with parchment or wax paper. Without that, the pages inside the book became stained. The first thing you want to do is make sure there are no excess water on the flowers and remove any dirt. As you probably figured out, I didn't pursue this subject after I finished school. But the good news is, I still have a use for this textbook. What I suggest doing is folding the parchment paper or wax paper if you have it in half and placing your flowers in it. I suggest using a fairly heavy book with a solid cover so the book doesn't bend when you move it. Once you put your flowers in your book, place some fairly heavy objects on top. It will take around three weeks for them to dry. Here are the flowers after three weeks. They have more or less kept their color. The petals on the black-eyed Susans shriveled up a bit, but other than that, they look great. With each of the flowers, they need to be dried until they have a crunchy or crispy feel. This is way two. You can use your iron or your Cricut press. Either one works, but the Cricut press burns less flowers than the iron does probably because of the time option and quick adjustable heat. To do this method, use parchment paper on both sides and your iron or press on low heat. You can adjust it either way, but I would suggest below 200 degrees Fahrenheit for around 20 to 30 seconds at a time and let the flower cool a bit before pressing again. To use the iron, press the flower in under 15 second intervals. A paper towel can be used to remove the moisture on plants or flowers with a lot of moisture, like this black-eyed Susan. I didn't use it for the white flowers with the leaves because there is little moisture and I didn't want the plant to stick to the paper towel. Don't forget to use a heat safe surface. To completely dry a flower plant, it takes around 11 to 15 minutes. This is way three. This is my favorite method. Use a microwavable kit. I got this one from Amazon and the link is in the description. You can use this over and over again. I will show you how to use this method without a kit next. To use this, just press your larger flowers down gently and place the flowers between the two cotton sheets that come with the kit. The flowers and cotton sheets go between the two felt pads and then the plastic plates go over the felt and the elastic bands are added over the plates. I had a different version of this but we misplaced it for the video. So I got this so I could press many of the flowers in our garden. This one is better than the other one I have and it works so well. What are some of your favorite flowers to press? What kind of art do you like to make with your flowers? The flowers mostly keep their actual color, and by using the short microwave intervals, the flowers don't burn. Depending on the flower or plant, it might take up to eight minutes, including cooling between intervals to do a batch of flowers. After the first three or four intervals, you may need to wet down the felt a bit to prevent the flowers from burning. 
Flowers that are larger are going to take a greater amount of time to dry because they also need more time to cool off between intervals. On to number four. With this method, I recommend 20 second intervals. Keep the intervals short and research what you want to put in with the flowers to absorb the moisture. Bounty paper towels are recommended on their website for microwavable use. Of course, put nothing with metal on it in a microwave. Next, I fold the paper over the flower and I put a microwave safe bowl with a flat bottom on top. It has to be heavy enough to push the flower flat as the moisture dries out. It takes about two to three minutes to completely dry. Make sure you check between each interval so you don't burn any flowers. Here are some flowers I pressed. I really like the dahlias. They will make some great future art. To store the flowers, they can be placed in a single layer between wax paper or parchment paper. If they're curling up, put them between the pages of a heavy book. Or do a single layer of flowers and add something slightly heavy on top. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and please subscribe for more future videos.